Hi, my name is Mandy Buchanan and I'm the owner of the Go Deeper Bible Studies blog. And in this series, we are having a look at the four faces of God, as described in Ezekiel 10 verse 14 and Revelations 4 verse 7. And in particular, how each of the Gospels represents a different face and what these faces mean in terms of the character of Christ and our response. Last week, we had a look at the face of Matthew and how that was the eagle and represented Jesus's kingly authority. Today, today we're going to be having a look at the Gospel of Mark and how the Gospel of Mark shows the face of the oxen or the suffering servant. Now, the first thing that we notice about the Gospel of Mark is that there's no mention of the nativity or of Jesus's genealogy. And the reason for this is that people didn't care where a servant came from or their genealogy or when they were born. A person was only concerned about what the servant could do for them. And so we see that Mark jumps straight into this. It starts with John preparing the way for Jesus in the wilderness. And then it goes straight to Jesus's baptism and testing. So we see that Mark starts immediately with Jesus's active ministry. The two parables that are mentioned in the Gospel of Mark that aren't mentioned elsewhere are Mark 4 verses 26 to 29 and Mark 13 verses 32 to 37. I'll read now from Mark 4 verses 26 to 29. He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. And Mark 13 verse 32 to 37 says, But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on God, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch so we see in these two parables that they're both parables that servants can relate to the first one the servants would have been responsible for the sowing and the harvesting of the seed and in the second one it was servants that were left in charge of the house and that when the master returned he did not want to find those servants sleeping but watching for his return and ready for him and so we see that mark specifically speaks speaks to servants and Jesus as being the suffering servant. And the key word that's most often used in the Gospel of Mark is the word immediately, because employers of servants demand immediate obedience. If they say something, they want it to be done immediately. And so that is the word that is most commonly used in the Gospel of Mark. And our response then should also be one of serving God. Just as Jesus was a suffering servant and laid down his life for us, so we need to be his servants and serve him and be willing to do whatever he says as soon as he says it. So I trust that you've enjoyed today's message and that you'll join us again next week for the Gospel of Luke. Thank you and goodbye. Bye.